Here we have a 1948 Mamar SE1 made for approximately about one year. This one is just about ready to go, I think. There we have it. Now this engine is um, just being rebuilt with a new cast iron tool workshop. Um, basically most of the tools date from immediately after the Second World War. Uh, apart from this flat bottom polisher which is probably pre-war. Um, this engine was only built for a bit in this style for a year. As you can see it has a hot brass stamped engine frame. And curiously, I think to save money, this particular SC1 was also fitted with a regulator. I always used to call it an SC2. To be perfectly honest, it's an SC2 engine with an SC1 boiler. Or is it an SE1 with an SE2 engine frame? It's entirely how you want to see it. I think Mammoth marketed it as an SE1. Uh, it's driving a flat bottomed line shaft. This one dates from about 53 because it's got a Mazat wheel on there. So it, it's about in period, you know, within a four or five year time frame. Um, let's say I've just fitted this with new drive bands here and here. And um, it's driving two polishers, a grinder and a particularly tidy looking uh, power punch uh, with the uh, hot brass um, stamped flywheel. Um, this one does tend to sort of prime a little bit, hence that's what all the girdling is. If you just excuse me while I get the water out of the funnel. Uh, once it sort of settles down, it does tend to uh, run rather well actually. Um, so the engine after 1948, this was in um, coercion with the move to Camden Street, they had the steel pressed engine frames, just for cheaper to manufacture and um, had a, certainly a more modern look um, in terms of the way that we understand mammals now. Um, this whole setup is obviously all screwed together on typical mammoth girder plates. Um, or L-shaped girders, and uh, as I say, it, it does tend to run rather well. Uh, it does prime a little bit, this little fella, but um, say the, the three-wick lamp on the small boiler does give it plenty of, uh, of power, and um, it runs a simple workshop like this without too much fuss. These early tools and engine frames all had the oiling points, which makes it a lot easier to actually uh, to run things. That's one of my bands just coming off there. Didn't screw that tight enough. And um, as you can see, uh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's running without too much problem. These little SE1s had, uh, and the SE2 versions were very short stroke engines, so they, they spin rather quickly. They also, like the early uh, wheeled tools, have um, the, the, the brass flywheel, uh, which was a particularly attractive feature. Sadly, this was uh, discontinued around about 1953, uh, when the cheaper Mazak items uh, were introduced to, you know, to keep the actual engines competitive and at uh, a realistic price point. Um, that's about it really, as you can see the engine's just about doing this okay, they're not particularly powerful, um, but uh, let's say they, um, they've got enough on to, to turn this little lock, uh, even if it's got one less tool to turn now. Um, the grinder itself, that's from about 48, that particular one uh, comes from the St Mary's Row uh, address box, so um, probably one of the very first uh, that were manufactured. I think they, they were introduced sometime around 47, 48. It's a bit hard to pin that down. Um, but as you can see the engine itself is sort of digging in now and, and just chugging away slowly. It probably needs a little bit of lubrication. So I'll just stop him just for a moment and we'll just put a little bit more oil in there just to help things along. And on the Base plate as well. That's a little bit better. They do tend to throw out quite a lot of water, these early engines, um, but I'd say that's all part of the charm, really. 
as you can see there's no uh, whistle fitted to this this engine hasn't been restored very much all I have done is respray the power box um, with a sort of satin paint uh, which has been allowed to harden um, apart from that everything else is as you would find it on uh, on an original engine and uh, let's say the tools are all cast iron frames on these so they're quite heavy the line shaft actually has a, a Mazak casting so it's a slightly later version it does actually have the red oval decal which combined with a flat base plate is um, a fairly um, sort of um, uncommon combination let's say uh, probably um, even less so than uh, a blue oval decal but um, as you can say, as you can see, I say rather, um, so the little engine sort of once it's finished uh, blowing out water and, and generally misbehaving, uh, it, uh, it settles down to uh, a nice simple little rhythm. I'm going to try and get this uh, band back on again. These are brand new ones, they can be notoriously difficult to actually tighten up. Um, and basically even sort of get to work sometimes uh, you have to get the tension just right I think oh, if you just excuse me I will try and get this one screwed back on but let's say it's under it's under tension at the moment which doesn't exactly make things that easy uh, and there it will go wrong since this is actually on camera I think we'll try it later on. We'll just pop that one there for the moment. And uh, really that's about it. Uh, simple little engine, no frills. Um, say the, the, the only time that you'll ever see an SE1 with that particular type of engine. I think they were only made in one style because uh, to keep the costs down, uh, post-war Britain was still under uh, rationing and uh, raw materials like brass and steel were um, hard to come by so making different types of engine frame was uh, a little wasteful so um, you know, they used the same engine for both units the, the SE2 obviously sporting a whistle instead and a slightly longer boiler um, but apart from that two identical engines, the same size engine plate um, and the uh, same size uh, sort of burner for the tents and purposes. You will also notice the earlier flat bases on these engines don't have retaining ears for the uh, wick, uh, for the actual wick burners. I can sort of say that those particular little features maybe um, came into being during the latter stages of uh, a flat base engines, maybe 52, 53 difficult to put an exact date on it, certainly a little bit later. Um, so it just means the, the lamp does move around a little bit, whereas the ears actually can keep it in position. Um, but um, as I say, there are you know, lots of little telltale features which give away the manufacturing date or give the owner an idea of when the engine was actually made, um, as there are with um, all our main odd engines. Um, I say this one is a particularly nice uh, sort of version. I haven't seen these appear too often. Um, I've seen one or two around. They're not uh, a common uh, item to appear on eBay. And this one in particular, uh, I purchased about 10 years ago now, 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, I say since then, it has been incorporated into uh, a, a particularly nice sort of workshop. These engines were built to uh, be incorporated into Meccano. They're far easier to incorporate into uh, to, um, models and, and all sorts of other driven uh, machinery because the flat base is so much easier to actually work with as opposed to the, the, the later press bases. So anyway, that's it. I'll stop talking and uh, we'll just have a few shots of the engine actually running and uh, running uh, this little workshop with uh, some degree of success, I would say.